far, so good. Uh, the Indian Mars probe is in a high Earth orbit and it will stay there for a few days while it's checked out and while it prepares for the launch window that will take it out of Earth orbit and into interplanetary space. I understand it's a 300-day mission. What will the coming year hold, do you think? What's the ultimate objective here? Okay, for the coming year, this probe will spend most of its time simply getting to Mars. Uh, It won't arrive at Mars until September of next year, so it's got a long journey ahead of it, and that journey is potentially filled with dangers because interplanetary space is a very hostile environment, far more hostile than simply being in orbit around the Earth, and uh, India has never been out this far before. The spacecraft has five instruments, and most of them are designed to study the atmosphere. We're looking at uh, why Mars has such a thin atmosphere compared to the Earth and uh, why it apparently lost most of its atmosphere because the Martian atmosphere in the, in the ancient past was probably much thicker and almost Earth-like. We, we, we know that had to be the case because there was liquid water on the surface of Mars, and we, we can still find evidence for that. So it's mainly concerned with the atmosphere. There'll be a bit of photography of the minerals and the surface. And one of the other mysteries it's trying to solve is whether or not there is methane in the atmosphere of Mars. And of course, if successful, India will become only the fourth nation to visit Mars after the Soviet Union and the US and Europe. So I guess there's a lot of prestige hanging on this mission. There is a lot of prestige in going to Mars, and that's one of the main reasons, I feel, why the Indians have decided to do this. Uh, They've taken a few blows with their space program in recent years. They've had some rocket failures and a bit of controversy over uh, some of the management. And I think they saw the Mars mission as a way to get some more points on the board quickly and easily, because if they can do this, they will beat the Chinese and a lot of other nations uh, with a successful mission there. As you say, there there is a lot of face-saving involved, but what about this mix of science and nationalism? Uh, Where does India stand on this latest mission? Okay, well, science and nationalism are a part of every nation's space program, and that goes way back to the, to the first launch of Sputnik in 1957. So I'd say nationalism is clearly a part of it, and what happens is that science effectively rides on the coattails of nationalism and the politics that it drives that leads to the program. Uh, the best example of that were, were, were the Apollo moon missions, which were entirely born of internal politics and geopolitical events, but nevertheless managed to achieve so much technically and scientifically and also just to inspire uh, the the public to to think of exploration and worlds beyond. Uh, So many good things came of that, but ultimately, without the politics and without the nationalism, that would never have happened. And of course, even with this Mars mission in India, it's not popular with everyone domestically. Some people say the money could have been better spent on housing, on food. What tangible and practical benefits do you think might come out of this uh, Mars mission if it's successful? Well, the Mars mission has to be seen within the context of India's space program, which is very mature, uh, very practical for India and for the world at large. Uh, People don't seem to realise that India has developed a very reliable, cost-effective rocket, and they launch it without much public attention on a fairly regular basis. And they're effectively operating a parcel delivery service to outer space because they get small satellites from other countries, and they put them, say, a dozen or more of these little satellites in a bundle and launch them all off on one rocket and that generates revenue for India. Plus you've got the fact that India is using its own satellites for uh, communications and weather monitoring and environmental protection. So there are a lot of very practical and tangible benefits to the Indian space program and this is a technology driver as well as inspiring more people to study science. So I would say you you, you can get cynics in India you get cynics everywhere around the world for space flight but uh, it's well within their budget to do this and uh, the benefits will pay off. And India, of course, uh, together with China and Japan, came in fairly late uh, into the space game compared to, say, Russia and the Americans. Have the Asian programs made um, or matched uh, the US and Russian ones in terms of scientific progress? 
Okay, in terms of overall progress, no space program in Asia has reached the, the same level as the United States or the current Russian program, but they're gaining ground very rapidly. Uh, and part of that is because we, we have a lot of, we, our technology in, in every area is much better than it was in the 1960s. Like, uh, the fact is most people have phones in their pockets now that have more sophistication than the whole uh, rocket that took astronauts to the moon. And as well as that, the fact that we've had so much experience with spaceflight means that uh, people can catch up more quickly and they don't need to reinvent the wheel. So Asia has still got a long way to go, but um, it's going to gain ground on the superpowers a lot more rapidly than I think a lot of people would realise. And just very briefly, in scientific terms, do you think it's a good thing that countries like India uh, are venturing into space? I think it's a wonderful thing to see more and more nations participating uh, in space flight and space exploration. It's good for the countries that do it. It's good for the world as a whole. And when you uh, launch anything into space, in some ways, you're not just representing one country or one space agency, but you're representing the